Welcome friends, this is Avinash and welcome to Ching Electronic Circuits. In, in today's tutorial, we will be studying how to write a driver for STM32 nuclear board. The approach is basic to our STM32 nuclear boards or any STM32 controller. You just need to refer your reference manual and make changes in the code. So let's start. First, you have to include the microcontrollers, letter file then in write the main body with a while loop this is indefinite while loop now you need to declare two variables like two point two variables actually rcc this is the variable pointing to Clock RCC clock and control block. Let us give a name clock. Other one is to use art. Give a name you are to it. Now, what you can do, you can assign the RCC's address into clock pointer, and you should have the user to address because it is the general UART used and is connected to the USB. Device controller. Now you need to configure the pins, the TX and RX pins of the user to in alternate function mode. For that, you also need to declare the pointer to GPI. <coughs> So <clears throat> it is written. Uh, so you can easily see in defense manual or you can see in data sheet that the default pins used for TX, the transmit pin of the user 2 is PA2, port A and pin number 2. So let us check first go to your data sheet and search for alternate function These are the alternate functions and the controller I am using is this one L, this package is used by that controller LQFP64 So let us search now use that to so it is not here again it's not here now you can see this one is user to tx the pin number is 16th and the pin is pa2 port a and pin number 2 so we need to configure pa2 as alternate function mode so let us go back to field we need to go 
you give the address the pointer of the port A to the GPI pointer now clock source need to be configured so select clock source these uh, things were all declarations these are local declaration to main and this one is global declarations now as we have discussed earlier we need to set the CR register for 8 megahertz clock set setting after that we have to check if the HSERDI flag is set or not for that we are using this statement register name is CR bit number is 17 bit of the CR register so one shift by 17 so now we need to configure the CR sorry the configuration or CFGR register so CFGR You must have wondered what are these operators this one and like this one or you can you could also use like uh, this one these are all bitwise and assignment operators so this is if you must have studied and operations in your digital electronic course or you must have studied XOR operations in your digital electronic course so these operators are used for those things now need to configure the HB2 ENR A HB2 Again, you need to see your reference manual for understanding why you are setting that bit. In for this my control, I am using uh, the last bit, the zeroth bit of this register, the HB2 ENR, is for enabling the port A. So therefore, I am just. enabling uh, the setting that bit actually I need to set the zero bit so the syntax is this if I want to set the first bit I should use this syntax if I want to, if I want to set the tenth bit I should use this syntax here I am using I am setting a 0 bit so I will be using this syntax so this bit is set I am enabling p 
export a GPIO now the you you use art to need to be enabled that is for that we have to enable the 17th bit of the app1 enr1 register so i will be using or bitwise or setting that bit Now you need to set the GPIO uh, model register of the GPIO. I need to clear the fourth bit. We will see in the reference manual. Why we are clearing the fourth bit? First of all, write this here. This is the fourth bit. Now let us see the motor register of GPIO. This is the reference manual. Go to beginning and search GPIO motor. Actually, we should search GPIO X motor, which will be easily found in the reference manual so let us complete allow it to complete its search so we are not getting up to the result so insert here as x we can go to search Still searching. Oh, we are here. Register. So, for alternate function mode, yes, you can see this is the alternate function mode. One zero and the port is A, bit is two. So, we have to use this. But by default, it is one 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 here. As you can see, for port A, it is this value. So if we clear this value, and it will be get zero, and by default it will be one. So we will be getting a one zero here. So then it will be in alternate function mode. The pin will be in alternate function mode. So therefore, I have cleared a fourth bit here. Now you need to use the AFR function register and give a value of you have to set 8th, 9th, and 10th bit. 8th, 9th, and 10th bit. So, first of all, write uh, there uh, we will set first 8th, 9th and 10th bit it now 
ninth entanglement. So let us see in the reference manual why you are, we are setting 8, 9, and 10. So uh, the AFR mm, that star is here. I think it should be here only. It is here. GPR AFR button. The header file it is written as AFR0 and AFR1. Error notation, array notation is used for this register. So have a look at its content. It says alternate function selection for port X in output pin, pin number 0 to 7. These bits are written by software to configure alternate function input outputs. So as we can see, Mm. Let us search the user in data sheet. We are searching for the AF0 to AF7 any mode that is relevant and have to be put in the AFR register. So search for user two Rx or Tx because we this application is for only transmitting data. This one look, this is a table we are looking for. Port is a port, second pin is there, and the AF7 we are we will be using this one user 2TX AF7 alternate function mode 7. So we will put here the values 7 mode, 7th mode is this one. So we have to set these three bits. Now we need to see which bits are here. Um, this one, these three bits. It was, I think, AF6. Let us search it again. We are using the TX pin actually. So this one is the TX pin. 